All right, part two, rebuilding spindles. We need to get the spindle out of the spindle casing. In order to do that, you have to drive it out. What I suggest doing is taking your nut, put it on there. Make sure you don't cross thread it. Take it down until it's just about flush. So you've got a nice surface. And get a nice good solid piece of wood. And you're going to take your spindle. Hopefully you've got a vise because it just makes it so much easier. Okay. Now I'm just going to let it hang there. I'm going to open my vise up to the point where I've got just the outer flange on it. Then I'm going to raise it up with a couple more blocks of wood. So that I've got room to drive it down and not hit the beam of the vise. So we've got a nice solid surface and trust me I've got an inch between here and here. Now we're going to get that block of wood and a BFH. And you're going to shock it just like we were shocking the pulley. And it moved. I did clean the spindle off and I put this tiny little bit of PB blaster on there. So. Sometimes they go easy, sometimes they don't. Got to realize these things have been together for nearly 50 years. So, there's our gap. And I'm going to show you that down here we have really, really thin thrust washers stacked up in there. That's so that they're spaced and gapped right. Now, you can just leave this stack alone when you pop that shaft out. Just leave that be. Don't do anything at all with it. Then you know, clean the surface, but then when you put it back together, you've already got that stack correct. So now, just a matter of getting it the rest of the way out. And we're going to put that back in the vise. So we can take the nut back off. Don't forget, put that nut back on your stack up so you have everything exactly right. Turn it upside in. It goes underneath my stack. I move the camera a little bit. Yeah, it's still in there. That's my stack up. Don't disturb your stack up. Now, to get the rest of it off, this is a soft hammer. I'm going to gently tap while I'm holding this. You can see it's going down. If you've got any dirt or debris, you want to get that out of the way. Now it's just about all the way down. So how do we get it the rest of the way out? A number of different ways. But My favorite way, just drift it. Drift it on out of there. Put it over a solid surface. And you kind of have to have three hands to do it. I know my hand's in the way. Can I do this right-handed? We're going to have to try to do it right-handed just for you guys. And just keep tapping. And it'll start coming out easier and easier as you go. Keep on 
definitely tapping that sucker out there. Now there is a sleeve in between the two bearings. I don't know how well it's showing up. But that sleeve is going to come into play when you're driving those bearings out. I'll show you that as soon as we get this shaft out of here. and use a smaller diameter obviously. Now you can see that sleeve a lot better than I was just talking about. I'm going to point it out for you. Hopefully we've got enough light. Let's see if I can get it to where we have enough light. How about if I just shed some light on the su subject and you'll be able to see. You can kind of see right at the top there that sleeve has slipped down. That sleeve is a spacer. Don't forget to put that sleeve back in. Don't do it. Now I have a favorite tool for driving the bearings out and it is a piece of half inch rebar because when they shear the rebar you end up with this goofy little raised up spot and that my friends is going to help you a lot in getting those bearings out so what you do you just move that sleeve over a little bit just enough so that when you put I can show you this way I can push this all the way through but if I move that sleeve I can get right on the edge of that bearing that's what we want we want to get right on the edge of that bearing open your vise enough so you've got a good steady surface and then get your BFH you don't have to be gentle with it you're replacing these bearings and then one good swift whack and then move it 180 degrees to the other side don't worry if it moves or not just just do it that way then move it to the other side and you can see I've got it angled this way, and then I'll angle it this way. I'll go back and forth like that until that bearing drops out. And just keep banging back and forth. It's already moving. It's about to fall out. I'll show you guys. You can see that bearing's coming out. You can feel it. And see that grease? Somebody took good care of this. But that grease, it doesn't go into the bearing. It just goes away. It helps keep moisture out from between the bearings. Chase the rebar. Now, something else that fell out, like I said, you guys have got to be aware of this. And you have got to make sure that you put it back in. Look at all that grease on that. That is your center spacer. Keep that center spacer. You might want to clean it off. But lots and lots of grease inside the spindle housing. Clean all that up. I'm going to clean all that up and then knocking the other bearing out is a piece of cake because you've got everything out of the way now. And then I'll show you how to set the bearings and put the assembly all back together. So stay tuned for part three.